Hi, my name's Kyle. Today I'm going to give you a quick rundown on how to use the new Actobotics servo controller. The Actobotics servo controller is a neat little compact manual servo controller. So that means you rotate the knobs to rotate the servos. It's in an aluminum case. It's well protected and it has an acrylic top. That way you can see the LEDs as they light up inside. The other nice feature about this is it has the Actobotics pattern on the back side. That way if you want to mount it to our pattern on the channel, you could easily do that and just run some screws right through the channel to attach it. So getting started, basically you've got two power options. You can plug it in to the 2.5 by 5.5 power jack on the front, or if you have a receiver battery, you can plug it in over here. The receiver battery, the polarity really doesn't matter since we have negative on both sides of the positive. Positive is always center. So for this, I'm gonna use our six volt, 3.5 amp power supply. Please note that you can run 4.8 to 7.4 volts on this unit. So if you wanted to run up to a 2S LiPo, if your servos can handle that much power, then you could just plug right into it. So as you can see, when I plugged in, the green LED lit up and that's an indicator that it's getting power and it's ready to use. Next I'm going to plug in the servos. The servos have slots in the front you can plug in there <clears throat> or if you're running long distance you could plug in a cat6 cable to the cat6 port off the side and you can run down to our boosted board and plug in there and then plug in your servos to the boosted board. So once the servos are plugged in, you can move the knobs and you'll find that the servos are going to move accordingly. So if I move the knobs fast, the servo is going to move fast. If I move the knobs slowly, the servo is going to do the same. Stock rotation is about 90 degrees given the fact that it's sending a 1000 to 2000 microsecond signal. But the nice thing about this servo controller is the PWM range is fully adjustable. So there's a little button down in the very middle of this and we have a cutout that way you can take a pen or a pencil or about anything and punch the button. Hold for about a second and you're going to find that the, the red LED light will light up. So that means that we're ready to adjust the minimum. So that's going to be one endpoint. And you can move these servos to wherever you want for that input endpoint. About there looks good. So once again, press the button for about a second. And both LED lights are going to light up. So you've got a green and a red. So you're ready to adjust your other endpoint. So I'm going to set this one to about 180 and we're just going to give the other one a little turn to make it more precise but, uh, but have a lot less rotation. Press the button. You can find that the green LED lights up and you're ready to run your servos. So you can see servo 1 rotates actually just beyond 180 degrees. I set it for its maximums which on an analog servo you can usually get about 180 out of. On a digital servo you wouldn't be able to overdrive it quite that far but uh, you could probably get about 110 degrees with a 900 to 2100 signal. On the other one you can see that it's moving just a little bit. It looks like about 30 degrees out of the full knob rotation. It's fully proportional so that means no matter if you set it to 30 degrees or 180 or any, anywhere in between you're going to have to rotate the knob all the way around to get to your minimum and your maximums that you have set. As I mentioned before, if you want to run a long distance between your servos, you can use a CAT6 cable and then our boosted CAT6 board. So rather than plug the servos straight into the board, I'm going to take a CAT6, plug it into the port off the side, and then I've just got a one foot extension run into the CAT6 boosted board right now. And then once you have that plugged in, you can plug your servos into the pins on the board. And you need to plug into channels one and four. So once you're plugged in there, it's gonna run just like previously. 
If you happen to get confused during the programming process or you just want to set it back to the factory defaults, all you have to do is remove power, punch the button with your pin, and plug the power back into it. You're going to see that the red and the green LED lights oscillate back and forth and then once they both light up at the same time you can just release it and then you're set back to 1000 to 2000 microseconds to get about 90 degrees out of your servos. So there's a quick rundown on the new Actobotic servo controller. If you have any additional questions be sure to email us at tech at servocity.com and if you want to see more videos like this one be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.